Your girlfriend should be happy to do you favors. She should be happy to inconvenience herself if it means helping you out because it means that she views the two of you as a team. She is committed to you. Your success is her success. She's not involved in all that pettiness of keeping score, keeping track of, you know, who gives more in the relationship, who takes more, all that tallying nonsense. If your girlfriend thinks it is beneath her to help you, to support you, to do you favors, then dump her. Trust me, you're better off in the long run. There is a radical branch of extreme feminism that takes the idea of female empowerment and independence to absolutely ludicrous levels, where they think that doing anything that supports a man, you know, cooking him meals, doing him favors, helping him out, that is toxic patriarchy. That is demeaning work. Women have been serving men for thousands of years. Why can't he do you favors? Why can't he cook a meal for you? Blah, blah, blah. Of course, men should be doing their girlfriends favors. They should be supporting them. But that's my point. It is the hallmark of a high quality person that they are happy to help out their partner, regardless of gender. How much a woman is happy to support you is a strong indicator of how committed she is to the relationship and to you. Take your career, for example. Now, if she truly believes that the relationship is going to last, she loves you, she wants to spend her life with you, she's happy with her choice, one day she wants to have children with you, then she's not going to view it as, you know, your career. It's just your life. And by extension, it's her life as well. There may be times when you have to move state, move cities in order to pursue better financial opportunities when it comes to your job. Pay close attention to how she reacts in those situations. If she gets all righteous and indignant, saying things like, well, why should I have to move for you, for your career? That's a big red flag. She's not thinking of you in the long term. She's not thinking of the two of you as a unit, as a team. She's thinking of herself as an independent entity and how this move is going to affect her personally. She's looking out for her own selfish interests. Now, obviously, if she's committed to the relationship, that doesn't mean that she's automatically going to move cities and go along with everything that you say. But pay attention to the words that a woman is using and how she interprets this information. Is she thinking about the both of you and your relationship or is she only thinking about herself? But this principle of support is really broad. It doesn't just relate to the career. It's about whether or not she is supporting you as a man, as a person. Is she invested in you? Does she want you to succeed? Does she want you to achieve your goals? Does she want you to be happy? Toxic, low quality women take, take, take. They just think of men as a resource to be exploited. What can I get from this man? How can I suck him of all of his emotional and financial energy, suck him dry and then leave him, move on to someone else? But a high quality woman is not that short term in her thinking. She realizes that as your partner, when you succeed, she succeeds. When you're happy, she's happy. And so she's happy to invest in you and in your relationship because she knows in the long term, the benefits are going to accrue to her. With that kind of thinking, a high quality woman is excited to help you. She's excited to do you favors. She's enthusiastic about doing whatever she can to make your life easier. Sometimes it's just small things. Like maybe she sees that you're getting a bit stressed with all of your responsibilities. And so she volunteers to do some small things to just you know, make your life a little bit more simple. Take that responsibility off. Maybe she cleans your apartment. Maybe she cooks you dinner. Maybe she gives you a massage. Or sometimes it's bigger. Like maybe if she senses that your stress is getting too much, she volunteers to move to a smaller house with lesser rent so that you can reduce your work hours, have a better work-life balance and focus on your more emotional, spiritual goals, focus on your hobbies, just be a happier person. You see, it's not all financial, not at all. What's important is that she's invested in you, you specifically, whatever your goals are, and she's happy to help in whatever way she can. That's what you're looking for. And you can actually test this out really early on in the dating process to find out if a woman is interested in you in the long term, if she's committed, or if she's just looking to boost her own short-term selfish interests. Now, back when I was a much younger man in my early 20s, and me and my buddies were you know, out practicing the pickup artist stuff, practicing social skills, we learned about this concept. Dating coaches would call it a compliance test. And it's something you do in the middle of a, like a flirtatious interaction. It's still relevant today, so I'm gonna explain how it works. What you do is in the middle of flirting with a woman, you make a small, seemingly insignificant request. Hey, can you pass me that napkin? Oh, could you move over here with me so I can hear you better? Oh, would you mind holding my drink while I go and get my coat? You see, they are these small, insignificant favors, symbolic almost, but psychologically they can be very, very telling because if she is willing to inconvenience herself simply because you requested that of her, you asked her that favor, it means she likes you. She's 
invested. You know, she's passed that compliance test and she wants to get to know you better. She wants to make a positive impression. It's a good way of confirming how you're doing, right? Like, is the flirting going well? Am I building attraction? You know, you give her this test, but it also is quite effective at generating attraction because you trigger that backwards rationalization process because as humans, we know we only really do favors for people that we are somewhat invested in. And so if she does this compliance test and she does what you ask her to do, even if it's something small, like, hey, can you move over here for a second? She's going to backwards rationalize that. Like, I would only do a favor for somebody that I liked. I guess I like this guy. Let's explore this further. Now, there's more to it, of course. Compliance tests can be a little bit complex, but it's not really in the purview of this video. So uh, if you have any follow up questions, just hit me up on Hey Hero. Send me you know, your questions, tell me a story. I'll send you a personalized video in response. But the thing is, when it comes to a girl that you're already dating, you don't really need a compliance test to confirm that she's attracted to you because the mere fact that she's dating you shows that she's attracted. You need something that's a little bit more deeper, you know, something that we'll call a commitment test. Now, I wouldn't recommend creating artificial situations just to test a woman. Just pay attention what's going on in your life and don't be afraid to ask her to do things for you. Would you mind doing the dishes tonight? I ripped my sweater. Would you mind sewing it up for me? I've been invited to this party and they've asked me to bring a plate of food. Would you mind creating something? They can even be financial requests. Like if the two of you pull up at a gas station, you can ask her, hey, while I fill up the car, can you go inside and pay? I know it seems like it's just something small and practical, but I'm telling you, there's massive psychological meaning in how she responds to that. If she gets all righteous and upset, like, why should I do that for you? There's a problem. If she's happy to do it, like, oh, great, an opportunity to make your life easier to do something for you. That's a good sign. She's committed to you. She likes you. She wants the relationship to succeed and she's working towards that. Again, let me emphasize, this is not about male dominance and like training women to be submissive to men's power or anything like that. This is about teamwork. It's about a natural reciprocity that should exist in a relationship where you're helping each other out because you're committed. For those high quality women who watch this channel, the exact same principle operates in reverse. If your boyfriend refuses to do anything nice for you, doesn't want to do you any favors, that's a problem. If he doesn't pick you up at the airport, if he doesn't you know, go with you to your cousin's wedding or cook you a meal every now and then, it means that he's not viewing the two of you as a team. He's still thinking of himself as an independent unit. That's a problem. Relationships where people are keeping score do not work. They don't. You know, there's so much energy that goes into keeping track of who's giving more and who's receiving more and arguing and fighting over who's getting the better deal. It's exhausting and it's childish. If you're with a woman like that, dump her, find somebody else. Find a woman who's happy to do you a favor because when she's in a relationship with you, she doesn't even view it as a favor because she's not thinking in terms of individual entities. She's happy to work to support the relationship. That's the beauty of a relationship between two high quality people. They're both so generous to each other that there's an abundance of love and energy and goodwill to go around. You don't need to keep score because both people's needs are being taken care of. There's no sense of lack. There's no need to be protective of your own interests. You don't need to be selfish like that in your outlook. So the next time you're dating a girl, give her a commitment test. Find out early, is she invested in you? Does she want the relationship to succeed? Ask her to do some small favors for you. And if her response is like, you do it, I'm not doing that dump her. When it comes to dating and relationships, there is a lot of male anger. And somebody recently asked me a very interesting question. They wanted to know what legislation could possibly be passed that could address some of the issues that men have and mitigate some of that anger. Fascinating topic. It's my latest Patreon exclusive video. I go through five or six legislative changes that I would personally make and I explain my reasoning. A little bit controversial, but really interesting. If you want to see that video, head on over to my Patreon. It's just $5 a month. You get instant access to a whole bunch of exclusive content. Just check out all the topics you, you see there. Look, I'd love to have your support. I'll see you over there.